Codex of Dragon Age Origin Chapter 5 Characters Alistair You know, one good thing about the Blight is how it brings people together. Alistair was a novice Templar when Duncan recruited him into the Grey Wardens. Or rescued him, as Alistair would say. His mother was a serving girl, who died when Alistair was very young. He was raised by Imon Gerem, Earl of Radcliffe, for a time. The Earl's wife, Isolde, suspected the reason her husband took an interest in the welfare of a servant's child was that Alistair was Imon's son. She insisted that the boy be sent away to the Chantry. Isolde's suspicions were unfounded, however. Alistair was not Eamon's son, but King Marek's. Eamon sheltered the boy to hide his existence from Queen Rowan, Eamon's sister. Alistair is fascinated by magic, even as his life is defined by fighting its darker manifestations. He has a fondness for re strange runestones and figural studies of arcane creatures. If Alistair is made king, with a great deal of assistance, Alistair was recognized by the Landsmeet as Marek's son and granted his father's throne. If Loghain is saved and Alistair is not king, unable to accept the decision to spare Loghain's life, Alistair left and has not been seen since. If Anora is made queen and Alistair is executed, to prevent further civil war, he was executed at the Landsmeet, on the orders of Queen Anora, ending the Theron line. If Alistair kills the, the Archdemon In the battle against the Archdemon in Denerim, Alistair gave his life to save his friends and end the blight. Queen Anora we have been given the gift of freedom by our forebearers. Let us not squander it. The only child of the war hero Loghain Maktir, Anora has never been one to stay quietly in the background. It is common knowledge that in the five years Anora and Kaelan held the throne together, she was the one wielding the power. She is held by, in much higher esteem than her husband by the people of Ferelden, nobility and commoners alike, and commands the respect even of foreign nations. Having once inspired Empress Selene of Orlais to declare, Anora of Ferelden is a solitary rose among brambles. She sent her maid Erlina to Arl Emon's estate to ask for the warden's help in escaping from Arl Howe, but as they fled House Estate, Anora in disguise, they were ambushed by Sir Coprian, there to arrest House Murderer. If the Warden tells Coprian that they were trying to rescue Anora, when the Warden tried to protest the charge on the grounds of defending Anora, the Queen declared that she was being kidnapped and called for Coprian for help. If the Warden surrenders to Coprian, the Warden surrendered to permit Anora's escape. If the Warden fights Coprian, a fight ensued, and Anora fled in the confusion. She made her way to Eamon's Denerand estate, and there offered her aid in defeating her father and the Lazbeat. If Anora betrays the Warden. However, when the hour came, she publicly supported her father, decrying the Wardens as slanderers and regicides. If Anora supports the Warden, with her help, Loghain's support was eroded. If Anora's support is not enough to sway the Landsmeet. Her efforts, however, were not enough to erode Loghain's support. If the Warden wins the support of the Landsmeet, the bands fell in line behind Eamon and the Warden. Loghain, however, would not accept defeat easily. He filled the room with troops and attempted a coup. Fighting erupted, breaking the long tradition of the Landsmeet, which was ultimately settled with a duel. If the Warden fails to win the support of the Landsmeet, the bands fell in line behind Loghain, and he called for the Warden's execution. 
fighting erupted, breaking the long tradition of the Landsmeet, which was ultimately settled with a duel. If Alistair becomes sole monarch. In the end, Anora was deposed, and Alistair was given the throne. If Alistair remains a Grey Warden. In the end, Anora was granted the throne, freeing Alistair from the burden of a responsibility he never wanted anyway. If Alistair is to be executed. In the end, Anora was granted the throne and Alistair was taken away to be executed. If both Loghain and Alistair live. In the end, Anora was granted the throne and Alistair walked out of the Landsmeet chamber, never to be seen again. If Anora is to rule with the Warden and if Alistair is to be executed. In the end, Anora kept the throne with the warden now her king consort, and Alistair was taken away to be executed. If Alistair leaves. In the end, Anora kept her throne, with the warden now her king consort, and Alistair walked out of the Landsmeet chamber never to be seen again. If Alistair stays, and Loghain dies. In the end, Anora kept her throne, with the warden now her king consort. If Anora is to rule with Alistair and if the warden kills Loghain. In the end, Anora and Alistair agreed to marry and rule jointly, though Alistair postponed taking the throne until the blight was ended. If Loghain lives, in the end, Anora and Alistair agreed to marry and rule jointly, with Alistair giving up his place among the Grey Wardens to take the throne. Balan Adokan if the Warden is not a Dwarf Noble. This is a time for action, not cultural debate. Third of King Andrin's children, Balan has always been considered the last and least of his family. Not the heir, nor the favorite, and not as accomplished as either sibling, Balan's most notable trait was his ability to stay out of trouble. If the Warden is a Dwarf Noble, Time is something you may not have much left of. Third of King Andrin's children, Balan has always been considered the last and least of his family. Tryon was the undisputed heir apparent from the moment of his birth, and the warden was not only the most accomplished, but also their father's clear favorite. Balan's was notable trait has been ability to stay out of trouble. If the warden killed Tryon, he tricked the Warden into slaying their brother Tryon, eliminating both his rivals for the throne in one stroke. If the Warden was framed, he murdered Tryon and framed the Warden, eliminating both his rivals in one stroke. Irrespective of the Warden's origin, if Balan is made king, his efforts paid off. He was named King of Orzammar by the Assembly. If Harrowmont is made king, his efforts were for nothing, though. The assembly named Pyrol Harrowmont King of Zarzamar, and the coup he tried to stage in revenge was cut down be almost before it began. King Caelan Theron I'd hope for a word like this in the tales. A king riding with the fabled Grey Wardens against a tainted god. Son of the legendary King Marek Theron Caelan was the first Ferelden king born into a land free from foreign rule in two generations. Since his father's death, he held the throne alongside his queen, Anora. He fell in the battle alongside Duncan at Ostagar. Sir Cochrian. Some of us know what honor and loyalty are. Cochrian came to Loghain's service the hard way. She belonged to a poor family and was out doing work on the farm when she saw a man on horseback being attacked by several bandits. She rushed into his assistance and found out belatedly that the man she saved was none other than the great hero Loghain. Though she was hardly more than a child, he took her in, offering her a position with the soldiers, and she climbed through the ranks through sheer determination, becoming the commander of Mark's shield. Loghain's elite soldiers was the proudest moment of her life. If Cothirn dies at the end of Rescue the Queen quest, 
she was slain while trying to arrest the warden for the murder of Arl Howe. It Cothryn dies later. She was slain while trying to stop the warden from entering the landsmeet. Connor Guerin. I feel like I'm sleeping, but I guess I'm not. While most of the bands and arrows of Peril then cart their children with them to the landsmeet in the interest of eventually marrying them off, Connor has spent his entire life at Redcliffe. And it's hardly surprising the child possessed the gift of magic. By law, he should have been taken to the Circle of Magi at the first sign, abdicating his claim to Redcliffe. Instead, the boy was kept out of public view and his magic hushed up, with disastrous results. All mages are beacons that attract the attention of fate spirits. Because of this, they are trained and tested by the Circle to ensure that they can withstand attacks from malevolent fate creatures that seek entry into the waking world. Untrained Connor drew the attention of a powerful demon that tore the veil asunder. If Connor is killed, to stop the demon's rampage, Connor was slain. If his old sacrifices herself in Joan's ritual, he was freed from the demon's power at a terrible price, the cost of his mother's life. Connor himself will be sent to the circle, where he will no longer endanger innocent people. If both Connor and Isolde live, with aid from the circle, he was freed from the demon's power. Connor will be sent to the circle tower, where he will no longer pose a danger to the innocent. Dog The Mabari is clever enough to speak, and wise enough to know not to. Feraldon proverb If the warden is a human noble, the Warren's Warhound has a pedigree older than High Ever and a penchant for driving cooks to destruction. If the Warden is not a human noble. The Warden found this Mabari in the camp at Ostagar. His master was killed in the wilds, and Dog fell ill from biting the Darkspawn in battle. Dog seems to have chosen the Warden as his new master now, seeking the Warden out after the battle of Ostagar and warning of an impending Darkspawn attack. Duncan, men and women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings, the Grey Warren sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness, and prevailed. Like many others, Duncan gave wife his family name when he joined the ranks of the Warrens, a symbolic gesture of cutting ties. He might say this was a convenience in his case, however. His mother was from the Underfells, his father from the winter. His childhood was spent in the free marches and Orlay. His people were everywhere and his homeland was nowhere. He was given the almost impossible task of leading the Warners in Ferelden, a kingdom that had thrown the order out 200 years earlier. Facing local suspicion and hostility, he set about finding recruits. He was killed in battle against overwhelming numbers of Darkspawn at Ostagar, alongside King Caelan. Arl Aemon Geren Nobility does not exist without obligation. We owe all we have, even our lives, to our land and our people. As the maternal uncle of King Caelan, Arl Aemon was one of the king's most trusted advisors. Redcliffe, while not a large or especially wealthy part of Ferelden, is a critical strategic location. The fortress guards the western path that leads to Orlay, as well as the major trade route with Orzammar. A well-respected man, though not the most charismatic, King Caelan once said of him, My uncle Eamon is a man everyone thinks well of, when they remember to think of him at all. He fell ill with a mysterious condition that even magic could not treat. It was not common ailment. Eamon was poisoned by a blood mage, Joan, who claimed to be working for Terran Loghain. The Arl's life was saved only by the most extraordinary measures, 
finding the urn of sacred ashes, the remains of Adrasli herself. His health restored, Aemon called a landsmeet with the goal of wresting power from Loghain and placing Alistair on the throne. With the question of the succession settled, Aemon returned to Redcliffe to prepare the castle's defences for the encroaching blade. King Andrin Aedokan Denial of the traditions of our people does not qualify as a political technicality. Andrin of House Aedokan traces his ancestry back to the Paragon Aedokan, the greatest warrior of Orsamar's history, who beat back the Darkspawn hordes in the first blade. The second son of King Anskar Aedokan, he became heir after his elder brother died in approving. The most respected king in four generations, he restored contact with Kal Sharok, the only other remaining city of the once vast Dwarven Empire, which had been lost during the First Blight. Flemeth, you are required to do nothing, least of all believe. Ages ago, legend says Ban Conobar took to wife a beautiful young woman, who harbored a secret talent for magic, Flemeth of Hyever. And for a time they lived happily, until the arrival of a young poet, Ozan, who captured the lady's heart with his verse. They turned to the chastened tribes for help, and hid from Conobar's wrath in the wilds, until word came to them that Conobar lay dying. His last wish was to see Flemeth's face one final time. The lovers returned, but it was a trap. Conobar killed Ozan, and imprisoned Flemeth in the highest tower of the castle. In grief and rage, Flemeth worked a spell to summon a spirit into this world, to wreak vengeance upon her husband. Vengeance she received, but not as she planned. The spirit took possession of her, turning Flemeth into an abomination, a twisted, maddened creature, she slaughtered Conobar and all his men, and fled back into the wilds. For a hundred years, Flemeth plotted, stealing men from the chastened to sire monstrous daughters, horrific things that could kill a man with fear. These Korkari witches led an army of chastened from the wilds to strike at the Alamari tribes. They were defeated by the hero Cormac, and all the witches burned, so they say, but even now the wilders whisper that Flemeth slips on in the marsh, and she and her daughters steal those men who come too near. Morrigan's mother saved the last Grey Wardens from death at the top of the Tower of Eshal, but just who or what Flemeth truly is, is a mystery. If the Wardens kills Flemeth, she was slain at Morrigan's behest, at least apparently. Brother Ferdinand Genetivi, as it is the duty of all true sons of the Chantry to make the chant heard from every corner of the world, I made it my mission to find as many corners of the world as possible. The Maker can hardly expect us to do one without the other. Excerpt from In Pursuit of Knowledge, The Travels of a Chantry Scholar by Brother Genetivi. Brother Genetivi is one of the Chantry's most well-known scholars, primarily on the basis of the stories he has published, which many of his contemporaries dismiss as fanciful, of his travels across the length and breadth of Thedas. His travels and rather too curious nature led him to study of folklore, which gave him the notion that he could track down the most debated of all artifacts, the urn of sacred ashes. He announced that he had found what appeared to be the trail of the urn, left in the legends of the regions for which it had passed from Menbrathus on its way into hiding. If Genetivi dies, he never returned from his venture into the mountains, and no one knows if he found the ashes or not. If Genetivi lives, and he appears to have been right, the final resting place of Andraste lay at the summit of a remote mountain. If Genetivi lives, but the urn is desecrated. 
he returned to Denerim with wild tales about dragons and heretics, which nobody believed. It will no doubt make for another interesting travel book, however. If Genetivi returns to Denerim and the urn is intact. He returned to Denerim with a little worse for wear, and was granted funds and manpower to mount an expedition to study the temple in which the turn is kept. Knight Commander Gregor If the warden is a mage, your magic is a gift, but it's also a curse. The circle of magi has trained you, and we, Templars of the Chantry, stand vigil to ensure that training is adequate. If the warden is not a mage, it is the innocent folk of Ferelden who matter. I would lay down my life and the life of any mage to protect them. Grim and Tacturn, Gregor has been knight commander of the Templar forces stationed at the Circle Tower for so many years that hardly anyone except the first enchanter recalls that he is not simply a part of the tower itself. If the mages are destroyed during the Broken Circle quest, with the destruction of the circle, it's hard to imagine where Gregor will go next. If Gregor dies, he was killed following Aldra's uprising. Lord Pyral Haromond No one is born with the rights to the throne. The sitting king may recommend a successor, but the assembly ultimately decides who will rule. House Haromond is one of the oldest noble houses, as old as Orzammar itself, Endrin's most trusted advisor, Harrowmont is well known for being an able administrator and the author of many compromises in the ever warring assembly. If Harrowmont becomes king, his promise to King Endrin to keep Balin off the throne was upheld by the intervention of one paragon and the Grey Warden. Harrowmont was named king by the assembly ending the internal strife in Orzammar. If Balan becomes king, his opposition of Prince Balan's bid for the throne ended badly. The assembly named the Prince King of Orzammar, and Balan's first act was to call for Harrowmont's execution. Our Rendell Howe To Bryce Kalsland, if the Warden is a human noble. It will be good to ride into battle once more, won't it, old friend? If the Warden is not a human noble. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the darkspawn. Pity. The Arling of Amaranthine winds along the sinuous northeastern coast of Ferelden. The waking sea is known for its temper, and the storms that sweep in from the warmer northern waters are sudden and brutal. These are the lands of Randon Howe. He was born during the occupation, and like many of the nobles at the time, joined Prince Marek's rebels. He fought alongside young Bryce Kalsland, future Tern of Hyever, and Lainus Bryland, future Earl of South Reach, at the bloody Battle of White River. It was the most catastrophic defeat of the entire occupation, from which only fifty rebel soldiers escaped alive. Although he was decorated for valor by King Marek, Howe's abrasive manners have earned him almost universal dislike among his peers. If the Warden is a human noble, added at the end of Origin Story. When Bryce sent his men to support the king at Ostagar, Howe took it as an opportunity to attack Hyever, slaughtering the people that there and claiming the land and title as his own. On Howe's death. Howe died at the hands of the Warden in Denerim. First Enchanter Irving. If the Warden is a mage. If you want to survive, you must learn the rules and realize that sometimes sacrifices are necessary. If the Warden is not a mage, the circle will go on, and we will learn from this tragedy and be strengthened by it. There is no higher office in a circle tower than that of First Enchanter. The one who holds this title must not only be an able administrator, but also a mentor, leader, 
and surrogate parent to all the mages of the tower. Irving has proven himself to be all these things with an added dose of cunning. Most apprentices know that little goes on in the tower that Irving does not know. He can soothe Templars angered by some childish magical prank at the same time that he loads the pranksters and everyone walks away satisfied. If Irving survives the Broken Circle quest. Although much of the circle was destroyed by Aldra's abominations, Irving survived and plans to rebuild what he can. If Irving does not survive the Broken Circle quest, he died when the tower became overrun by demons. The fate of Ferelden's circle is now in question. Arlesa is old. For the ones who delivers the sacred ashes of Our Lady will have the esteem of Redcliffe and all the riches it is in my power to grant. The Arling of Redcliffe was a source of constant trouble for Emperor Revel during the occupation. It was rumored that since each new report sent the Emperor into a pit of violent rage, his court had taken to poisoning messengers before they could deliver their accounts. Isolde's family was the tenth to be given the difficult task of governing Redcliffe, and since most of the previous Arls had either been murdered or by their bands or beheaded by the Emperor, they did not approach the job with a great deal of enthusiasm. Isolde met Eamon, not realizing he was the rightful heir to her father's domain, and quickly became smitten with him for being part of the resistance. Never mind that it was her family he was resisting. Perhaps a bit too romantic for an own good, she insisted upon staying behind with Eamon when the rest of her family was driven out. When her only son began to show signs of possessing magic, Isolde tried to cover it up, knowing that he would be taken from her by the circle if found out. She hired an apostate mage to tutor him in secret, little knowing that her tutor was being paid to poison her husband. Eamon fell ill, and Connor, desperate, tried to use magic to save his father, magic that attracted the attention of a demon. If Isolde sacrifices herself in Joan's ritual, she gave her life to free Connor from demonic influence. If Isolde kills Connor, unable to free him, Isolde took Connor's life to stop the demon. If the warden kills Connor, Unable to stop the demon, Connor was slain by the warden. If both Isolde and Connor survive, the circle of magi were finally called in, almost too late, and Connor was freed from the demon's power, though the damage to Redcliffe was severe. Liliana In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace, and in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. If Liliana is successfully romanced, here with you, knowing the freedom of the road and the uncertainty of tomorrow, I feel alive again. A lay sister of the Chantry who can beat the stuffing out of a trained mercenaries would be notable enough, but one who is also claims to have been sent to fight the Darkspawn by the Maker himself is... Uh, unusual, to say the least. If Liliana's initial offer of help is accepted, she joined Alistair and the Warden in the Lothering, insisting that she would prove useful. If the Warden refused her initial offer of aid, she asked to join the Grey Wardens in their endeavors, sort of, but was turned away. When joining at Lothering exit after initial refusal, her persistence, however, paid off. She made them relent and allow her to join in their travels. There is more to Liliana that had ever been apparent at Lothering, however. She spent much of her life as a bard in Orlais, a minstrel, assassin and spy employed by the nobles of Val Royale in their elaborate games of intrigue. Her decision to join the Chantry was not merely the product of her disenchantment with the life of a bard. The Liana was framed by her bardmaster and fled to escape execution as a traitor. 
Liliana takes care to honor the lover in cloister that took her in, and keeps symbol of Andraste's blessings close to her heart. If Liliana leaves, she eventually was driven away and has not been seen since. If the warden defiles the urn of sacred ashes whilst Liliana is present, when the warden corrupted and destroyed the sacred ashes of Andraste, Eliana drew her weapon and was killed alongside the guardian. Logain Maktir It takes more than legends to win a battle. Understand this, I will brook no threat to this nation, from you or anyone. If he is killed at the landsmeet, war is cruel. Every soul who fought alongside Marek knows this, and in it there are no such things as innocence, only the living and the dead, and the degrees of guilt both bear. If permitted to join the Grey Wardens at the Landsmeet, I pass your test. Fate has a twisted sense of humor, it seems. Logain was born a farmer during a time when his country was under foreign occupation. When he was still a boy, he joined the resistance, where his considerable tactical genius quickly became apparent. He became close friends with Prince Marek, the last true heir to the Ferelden throne, and together they led the rebels to drive out the forces of the Orlesian Empire. Marek raised his friends to the nobility, and Logain is now more of a symbol than a man. He represents the Ferelden ideals of hard work and independence. During the battle at Ostagar, he fled the field, leaving King Caelan and the Grey Wardens to die. He then returned to Denerim and declared himself the regent to his daughter, Queen Anora, demanding that Ferelden follow him against the Darkspawn, upsetting a great many of the bands. His actions sparked a civil war. Logain's supporters found themselves fighting their neighbors who blamed Logain for the death of the king as well as those who simply wished to take advantage of the power vacuum. If he is killed at the Landsmeet, he was defeated in single combat at the Landsmeet and summarily executed. If permitted to join the Grey Wardens at the Landsmeet, he was defeated in single combat at the Landsmeet and sentenced to undertake the joining ritual. He survived and rejoined the fight for Ferelden as a Grey Warden. Logain has defined himself by the borders he seeks to maintain and expand. He is ever the tactician, and likes poring over maps both ancient and modern. If he kills the Archdemon, he struck the killing blow against the Archdemon, sacrificing himself to end the blight and save his country. Morrigan Which of the wilds? Such idle fancies, those legends. Have you no minds of your own? Of herself, Morrigan says little. She does not deny being a witch of the wilds, but beyond that, everything about her is in question. Her mother claims to be Fleme. If that's true, then Morrigan might well be a very powerful witch, for the tales of the daughters of Fleme tell of twisted, monstrous women who can kill a man with fear. She was made to accompany the surviving Grey Wardens, the payment, Plymouth said, for saving their lives at the Tower of the Shaw. If she is told to leave. Whatever Plymouth's purpose was, however, will probably never be known. Morrigan's critical eye is not reserved solely for others. Knowing or not, she has a simple fondness for jewelry and is very particular about her presence. On the eve of battle with the Archdemon, she made an offer to the Worms, sire a child with her, and she could use it to capture the Archdemon's soul at the moment of death, saving the Warden who struck the killing blow. If her offer is refused, when this bargain was turned down, Morrigan disappeared. After final battle, if her offer was accepted. After the battle, Morrigan disappeared. Ogren. I'm not saying I should be your first pick for a dance partner and a, a gear girl ball, but in the deep roads, I'm your man. 
Ogren of House Conrad was once a promising member of the warrior caste. His house was not especially high-ranked, but many of its members, Ogren included, had won notable victories in the provings and was considered to be rising in prestige. When a smith caste family with plenty of money but no political connections offered their daughter in marriage, his family accepted the match, and then everything changed. His wife, Branca, was named a paragon for her achievements. All of House Conrad joined her newly made noble House Branca and vanished with her into the deep roads. As time passed and it became more and more clear that Ogren has been abandoned, he became the butt of jokes throughout Orzammar. He took to drink, which didn't especially help. Drunk and humiliated, he challenged another warrior to approving over an insult and killed him. The match was meant to be fought to first blood. As a punishment, he was stripped of his house and barred from bearing arms, the only fate worse for a warrior than exile. The Grey Warden mounted a search for Branca and found her, and the Anvil of the Void, for which she led her house to their deaths. Afterwards, having apparently nothing better to do, Ogren offered his services to the Grey Warden and left Orzammar to help end the blight. Ogren enjoys challenging his palate with alcohols of ever-increasing rarity, potency and outright lethality. This has afforded him no benefit whatsoever. If the Warden kills Ogren, he was killed in a dispute with the Warden. If he leaves the Warden after joining, he left some time for parts unknown. Stan. Either you have an enviable memory or a pitiful life to know nothing of regret. The northern islands are remote, lush jungles that harbor cities rumored to be the most extraordinary ever built. These are the lands of the Kunari, lands that no foreign eyes ever see. Only the stories of the three exalted marshes waged against the giants have reached the south until the arrival of Stan. The stoic giant in the cage was surely the strangest thing the people of Lothering had ever seen, until the blight struck. If Stan is not rescued from his cage, he remained in his cage to await death and most likely found it. He was sent with a small group of Kunari soldiers to investigate the blight and report back. Outside Lothering, they were ambushed by Darkspawn. They fought off the attack, but only Stan survived. Farmers found him dying and took him in, but when he awoke, alone and unarmed, he panicked and killed the entire family. Realizing he had sacrificed his honor, Stan awaited for the villagers to come and surrendered, expecting death. His sword and his honor restored, Stan chose to continue with the Warden and take the battle to the Archdemon. Stan has an eye for paintings, an appreciation that might seem out of character, but is actually an extension of guitar discipline. He respects an artist for careful composition, a skill that is as much about where the brush stroke stops as where it begins. If he leaves, he left intending to seek out the Archdemon alone. Van Tegen Garen The banner will not bow to you simply because you demand it. Younger brother to Arl Demon of Redcliffe, an uncle to King Caelan, Tegan holds the banner of Raysphere, a tiny province of Redcliffe's squeeze between the Frostback Mountains and Lake Caelanhead. Van Tegen avoids the Denerim court except to go hunting with his nephew, and rarely makes himself heard at the landsmeet, preferring to leave politics to his brother. Valentrian Remember that our strength lies in commitment to tradition and to each other. Every islandage has a haran, an elder. It falls to the haran to arrange marriages for those without family, to negotiate with the guards when there's trouble, and to act as a sort of mayor and surrogate uncle to the people of the alienage. 
The title, like so many things, is a holdover from the entire time of Arlathan. For Harens are not necessarily the oldest person in their community, or even all that old. Tradition gives the role to the oldest soul, the wisest, cleverest, and the most level-headed. Valendrian has been Haren of the Denarum alienage since he was in his thirties. After unrest in the alienage, if the warden is a city elf. He was taken across the sea by Tevinter slavers. His whereabouts are now unknown. After unrest in the alienage, if the warden is not a city elf. He was nearly shipped to the winter by slavers, but was returned to the alienage by the warden. Win. I will not lie motionless in a bed, with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. It's perfectly right to think about the many indignities you plan to inflict on your enemies, but to talk about it, well, that would be unladylike. Wind's talent became apparently early on, particularly her skill at healing magic. She was well liked by all her mentors, and was recognized as an exceptionally gifted student. Even the Templars who watched her could not deny that she represented the best the Circle had to offer. She was an intelligent young woman, who possessed a quiet confidence and maturity throughout her years. She spent many years mentoring apprentices within the Circle, and her peers thought so highly of her that she was asked to be first Enchanter Irving's successor, but she refused, saying that she had no desire to work in the Upper Echolands. When word reached the Tower of King Caelan's call to arms, Wynne volunteered to go to Ostagar. If Wynne is alive at the end of Broken Circle, she escaped the battle with her life and stayed to search for survivors and attend to the wounded. When she returned home, she found that Aldred had gone on ahead of her, spreading the lie that the Worms had betrayed Caelan and urging the Circle to support Loghain. Wynne immediately spoke with Irving and told him the truth. Irving then confronted Aldred about his falsehoods, prompting Aldred to use terrible measures to take over the Circle. If the Warden kills Wynne during Broken Circle. While trying to save what was left of the Circle, Wynne was cut down by the Warden. After dealing with Aldred and his abominations, Wynne joined the Warden in the quest to end the Blight. For Wynne, the printed word is a window to true understanding. A scholar by heart, she feels that what a people commit to the page is sacred by definition. If she is in the party and the Warden defiles the sacred ashes. She was killed fighting alongside the Guardian when Andraste's ashes were corrupted and destroyed. Keeper Zephrian, even with all our magic and skill, we only delay the inevitable. If the Warden is a Dalish elf, in Arlathan, it is common for all the Haran to hold a private council while their respective clans are still settling in. These meetings inevitably last well into the next day and end with furious shouting, such that many say that the true reason the clans all go their separate ways is that no two Haren can stand each other. Zafrian is nothing at all like Keeper Marathari, but this is to be expected. He is older, more severe, and his clan is facing a much more terrible enemy than the usual Shemlan that plague other clans. If the Warden is not a Dalish elf. It is said the elves lived in Ferelden long before any others set foot here, and though most of their knowledge has been lost, it falls to the keeper of each clan to preserve what they have. Zathrian is an old, severe elf with little love for outsiders, but his clan is facing a more trying enemy than most. Long ago, in retribution for an attack against his clan, he unleashed a terrible curse. He summoned a spirit into this world and set it upon the humans who had wronged him. The spirit did not simply slaughter Zafrian's enemies. It transformed them into monstrous beasts. In time, however, the werewolves he had created regained their minds and they sought out the one responsible for their suffering. 
turning the curse upon Zatrian's own people. If the warden killed the elves, he was killed along with the rest of his clan. If the warden killed the werewolves, the warden slew the werewolves, including Weatherfang, ending the conflict. If Zephyrin's curse was ended, at the urging of the Lady of the Forest, the Warden persuaded Zephyrin to give up his own life, returning the werewolves to their human forms, and saving the elves who had been inflicted with the curse. Zebran Aranai The crows sent their regards. I intend to see this fruit to the end with you. After all, someone must take the responsibility for preventing your untimely death. Between the Tevinter Imperium, Ravain, and the Free Marches sits the nation of Antiva. Although it possesses few resources of its own, Antiva's location makes it a center for trade in the north, and the capital, Antiva City, is the wealthiest in the world. Antiva has virtually no army. The monarchy is too weak to support one. Most Antivans would be hard-pressed even to name the current king, as the true power lies in the hands of a dozen merchant princes, each with a personal army, and each locked in a distant struggle for power against all the others. Anyone would think, then, that Antiva would be a ripe target for invasion by one of her neighbors, but even the Cunari leave Antiva alone for one very good reason. The House of Crows. The most efficient, most feared, and most expensive guild of assassins in the world calls Antiva their home, and their reputation alone defends the borders. Zebran was the crow contracted by Loghain to assassinate Alistair and the Warden. One failed attempt later, however, he found himself at the mercy of his would-be victims. If Zebran is not recruited and killed, he was killed which likely has ruined the crowd's otherwise perfect record of success. If Zebran is not recruited and released, they showed somewhat dubious mercy by letting him go, and what's become of him is anyone's guess. If he is recruited, they showed him unexpected mercy, and in return he swore to aid the Warns on their quest to end the blight. If he is subsequently leaves, they parted ways, however, and Zebran has not been seen, seen since. If he is subsequently killed, other than when Taliesin attacks, things don't always work out as expected, however, and Zebran was killed in a disagreement with the Warden. If he sides with Taliesin in the attack at the Jalansmi, that's called. The word of a crow, however, is little more than noise. Crows ambushed the Warden, and Zebran joined them. He was killed alongside his Antivan brothers. Zebran shows an affinity for the finer things in life, hardly surprising for an Antivan crow, but his appreciation can be more poetic than he lets on. A simple bar of refined silver or gold, uncomplicated by a craftsman's hammer, is elegantly valuable. Witherfang Witherfang is, according to the keeper Zephyrin, a wolf. He is no ordinary wolf, however. He is a wolf possessed by a powerful spirit and the source of the wearful curse that plagues the Brazilian forest. While Witherfang is hundreds of years old and very powerful in his own right, the only way to end his curse is to cut out his heart and bring it to Zephyrin. It appears that Witherfang has two sides, as nature does. One is the wolf, savage and male, but the other is Lady of the Forest, gentle and female. Witherfang is both beast and beauty, terrible and peace-loving. The Lady has guided the werewolves of the Brazilian forest to come to peace with their nature, as she has 